in a world where more than half the population could only be three things. Comes a girl from a strange and exotic land. Her name is Julia. She grows up with three brothers. She learns to fight. You know, I grew up as a working class person. My dad was a union member. He worked in a grocery store in the meat department. My mom was a nurse. She applies to a strange exotic college, a faraway place called Antioch. She writes a college essay. Tomboy was the term generally used to describe me during grade school, although my teachers considered me sensitive and thoughtful. My present physical condition love of athletics and ignorance of many feminine wiles stems from this rough and tough period. I dislike being coerced into doing anything which I consider unnecessary. She's accepted into Antioch. She's strongly motivated, active in school. She won't offer much unique, but would be excellent filler. So I ended up going to Antioch. That utterly changed my life. I wasn't really prepared well for college. I went a year, I dropped out. Stayed out, worked, went back. Much to everybody's surprise, I went back. She meets a nice Jewish boy from Long Island. She receives evaluations. On occasion, Miss Reichert pursues the assignment with such enthusiasm and vigor and initiative that she forgets that her part of the program should complement and be coordinated with all other dimensions of the program. It was the 60s. I learned about class and race and America's role in the world. But the movement that touched me the most was the women's liberation movement. The way the media portrayed the women's movement, we realized we had to tell our own stories. Follow him, follow him wherever he may go. I would say a young wife should be neat and clean and attractive as possible. The wife should not expect the husband to do any housework, like wash dishes, clean the house. She should be kind and courteous. She should have a pleasant attitude about life in general. So we made this movie, but how to get it out into the world? We learned to do it ourselves. We started New Day Films, a co-op of independent filmmakers. I even wrote a book. New Day kept growing. New Day is still going strong with over 100 filmmakers in a democratic worker-owned company. She will join forces with a scruffy, sometimes smelly, ragtag team of rebels. She will work extraordinarily hard to bring stories to the world. I'm going out tonight, I'll be back, baby, and I walk on through the front door. Come on. We were trying to make big films about big things and make lots of connections with the system and the history and why it's all happening. Hi, remember me? I'm the person who's doing the film. Well, I was calling back to see if you decided yet whether you'd be willing to do an interview with us for the film. Uh-huh. But then I said, if I die, why shouldn't there be a record? How could I have been so good when I was active and be so bad because I tell them I'm a communist? Mm -hmm. I really believe it's better to put your cards on the table. Of all the people who were talking about solving problems and programs and so forth, when there was a picket line, they were out front. I don't care if it was on 14th Street, 42nd Street, 34th Street, every community. There was some guy up in that soapbox going away, you know, the working class, 
The capitalist class has nothing in common. Nothing. You know, and you'd ponder that. You thought about it, you say, Jesus, that's so right. Hey, them son of a bitch is up there eating the filet mignon, and we're down here eating burnt liver. Good news will come. Uh, Seeing Red was nominated for the Academy Award. We just found out this morning, and... Julia Reichert spent much of the day on the telephone, accepting both congratulations and new bookings for Seeing Red. A nomination for Best Feature Documentary means a better draw at the box office. It means that our film will have a much better chance at reaching a lot of people, because theater owners, you know, who are key to getting to people, you know, they hear that Academy Award nomination, and that's a legitimizing factor. That means it's a real movie. Everybody's worried about me. My aunts, my uncles, my mom. My dad was still living. He'd be worried about me. And now that he's progressing in his weight, he sees the difference in his health. But when he was wanting to not take pills and throwing pills out the window and flushing them down the toilet and didn't want to drink the insure and didn't want the TPN, and it, it was a big difference in his, in his health because he stayed sick. Yeah, I talked with the doctors yesterday, Tim, and they said no rides that turn you upside down. <laughs> Uh -huh, funny, I no roller coasters. This is just a small film from Ohio. When you set out to make a documentary, you really don't know where it's going to lead you. You don't know how long it's going to take. And sometimes you don't really know exactly why you're making it. So what happened to us? So five children from Cincinnati, Ohio, all of whom were fighting childhood cancer, their parents, their doctors, allowed us to be with them during the years that they faced life and death. Thanks to their courage, we went on a journey where we were witness not only to the terror of cancer, but also to the best of our humanity. We went to a meeting and seen on closed circuit TV that they were shutting the plant down. And he cut it. I thought I was going to retire from GM. And it didn't work out that way. So now I have to do something else. I don't know. I, you know, I, I couldn't see myself going back to school. You know, not after doing this. This has been my life. You know, I'm a factory worker. I'm proud of it. She will dedicate a good portion of her life to being a teacher, to showing students the very meaning of high standards, while only occasionally going out drinking with them. She will continue to make films, even finishing one just this summer. Come on. We got this. Sparkle is Sherry Williams. She's with the Dayton Contemporary Dance Company. She's a modern dancer, contemporary dance, very, very vigorous dancer. <laughs> and she was 49 years old. Three, two, one, ease it down. Ooh, come on, come on, come on, one more look, go. By the end of the workout, she's laughing and still standing, and everybody else is like curled up on the floor, or just lying down, panting. And she's like, okay, guys, that was good. Let's go, you know. Everyone comes here, they know about Sherry Sparkle Williams, and they are amazed that she's still going this long. The first time I saw Sherry perform, I thought to myself that if there are people out there who dance like this, I want to dance like that too. I'll play around for Sherry all the time. And she was out and everything was going well. And her hip pops. It went and it was a pain that I've never felt in my life. So after this injury, she's 49 years old going on 50. She had to decide whether 
she could do or wanted to do the work that would be involved to come back up to performance speed. So she really had to decide, crossroads, you know, am I going to go out on an injury or am I going to somehow make it back? Congratulations. Congratulations, Julia. Congratulations, Julia. Congrats, darling. Congratulations. Mazel tov, Julia. Omo te te. We love you. 